Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week we're going to make a start on the Tamiya Bullhead. We'll follow the usual course where we go into some extra detail for the first couple of steps, then start rattling through the build until we have a working truck. Right, first in the manual we have lots of info on what bits and bobs you need to complete the truck. Tamiya of course recommend Tamiya parts, which is all well and good, but there are better choices. For tools, you're going to want a couple of JIS screwdrivers, or in a pinch, Phillips will do too. A pair of pliers with a narrow, grippy tip. Some side cutters with a nice, sharp, flush cutting edge. A sharp knife. A flat screwdriver. There's only four screws that need it, but they are rather important ones. And a pair of tweezers. It's also handy to have a set of parallel jawed pliers to get a really good grip on the linkage rods later on in the build. But you can get away with a normal pair. For electronics, we're going to use a Flysky GT3C with modified firmware. The stock GTC3 will work well too, but with the additional features we get with the new firmware, we can run more channels and control two steering servos independently, as well as twin ESCs with all sorts of fun tricks. The receiver is a Flysky 6 channel one. We'll almost certainly end up with an 8 channel receiver for all the lights. But if you're planning a basic setup, you only really need two channels to make the truck go. For the initial run, we're going to use a 6L Naimai with a Tamiya connector just to make sure everything's working correctly. It'll then get replaced with a LiPo very quickly. And here's the servo. It's one of those 27kg ones you see all over the place. Not the best, but more than good enough for the stock setup. Right, step one, checking out the RC bits. Now I always skip this bit of the build, as generally the electronics are so reliable these days, you'd have to be very unlucky to have an issue out of the box. So, on to step two, the servo horn. Right, on the left of the diagram, we have the always useful scale list of metal bits and fixings. They're listed as BB2, BC1, BC3 and BH3. More often than not, that makes them really easy to find. The BB2 screws are in bag B, the BC1 washers are in bag C, and so on and so forth. If we look at bag B, it's quite easy to find the screw that we want. But to make it easier to fish out the parts, I always drop them into a plastic pot, one for each bag. So this one will be the bag B pot. I'll decant the other ones out off camera as we go. So for this step, we need two 3x8 self-tappers, two M3 plain nuts, two 3mm washers, and we need two 6mm ball ends with the part number BH3. But there isn't a bag marked with an H. If we dig through the other bags in the kit, we find two likely suspects. Now we could probably work it out, but at the back of the manual, they list the contents of every bag. So if you're stuck, you can match things up quite easily. With all the fixing set out, we need to find the plastic parts. First, this kit uses a special servo arm. There's two to choose from, Futaba or Acoms. Now this servo uses a Futaba spline, so we need the part B3. If we go through the plastic parts trees, we'll find one with a big B in the corner tab. And if we go to the servo arms, one of them will have a number three. Now we cut the part free using the side cutters, cutting the part as cleanly as we can. Next we have the two servo posts, the C7s. Now just like the arm, we find the C tree, of which there's two, and we cut free the parts marked with 7s. For this step, we'll also need the Tamiya cross wrench, which is hidden in the bag with the grease. Now we're going in at the deep end a bit here, but before we start screwing things together, we need to make sure the servo's in its central position. You can rig up the electronics as per step one, but it's more convenient if you have a servo tester that can center the servo. Either works just as well for this, we just need the servo to be centered. Next, we need to fit the ball ends onto the arm. On the back of the arm, there's some hex shaped holes that we pop a nut into. Then from the other side, we screw in the ball end. It's easiest if we screw them in with fingers, then nip them up with the wrench. The servo arm can now drop onto the servo. Now we want it to be as close to straight as possible. Usually if it's a little bit off, you can flip it 180 degrees and it might be a little bit closer. The trick here is we want to get the mechanical setup as close as we can, so the steering will have the best chance of working at its best. Usually the servo would come with a screw for securing the arm, but in this case it'll be a short M3 screw. 
This particular servo has been in a few trucks already though, so I've dug out a Tamiya M3x6 from the spares box that will do the job. It's best to do the screw up while the servo is powered, take up the slack in the thread, then just give it an extra little tweak. If we give the servo tester a twiddle, we can make sure the servo is working nicely. This one's been taken apart to get the feedback pot cleaned up, but it's always a good idea to give it a quick check before fitting. It's pretty rare to get a faulty one out of the box these days, but it can happen. Next we have the servo post, which gets mounted to the back of the lugs on the servo, with the self-tappers with the washers under the heads. Now until we fit them to the plate in the next step, we just want them done up so they're just slightly loose. We don't want to build any stresses in, so we'll do up all the screws carefully at the same time later. Step 3. Linkages and servo plate. This time we need two 3x8 self-tappers, a 3mm washer, A5 the servo plate, four F7 rod ends and two rods. Now there's four rods of a somewhat similar length, but as always Tamiya are thoughtful enough to give you an actual size diagram to check against, so there's no getting the wrong ones. On the ends of the rods we need to thread on the rod ends. This is where the parallel jaw pliers come in handy. You can get a really good grip with very little effort. You can use normal pliers too, just take care not to slip and mark up the rods. We want to get the rod ends, so there's a 126mm gap between the inside faces. Again, the diagram in the manual is a great help, but I tend to use a vernier just because it's quicker to check while tweaking the gap. Although, it doesn't really matter too much as long as you're somewhere near, it's almost inevitable that you're going to have to pop them off again to adjust them once the truck's put together. Next we'll fit the servo to the plate, and one end is a fixed position, so we can use one of the self-tappers to fit the servo. Just like the other two screws, we'll just leave it slightly loose for the time being. At the other end, there's a slot rather than a hole, so we're going to use the second screw with a washer. We have a slot here because some servos are slightly bigger or even smaller than the standard size. Especially vintage servos, they used to be quite a range in sizes. Once all the screws are in loosely, we'll squeeze up the posts and nip up the screws one at a time. The idea is to have everything square and straight before the screws bottom out, so there's no stresses or bends being built into the assembly. Last bit, we need to clip the rod ends onto the balls. The way most people attack these is to pop the rod end on over the ball and squeeze. Now, I've always found this is a great way to pinch an appendage in the pliers when you slip. Instead, I position the ball to the side, then use the pliers to pull the rod end over the ball. It's quite a bit easier, but you do have to be extra careful not to mark up the side of the ball. It's critical you don't let the steel pliers skid on the brass. Practice makes perfect, and to be honest, the old Tamiya rod ends aren't the best in the first place. They always introduce a bit of slop, and when you've got five or six in a chain between the servo and the hubs, you end up with quite a bit of a wobble. Step 4. Metal plates and bottom cover. This time we need the chassis tub, and before we do anything else we need to clip the nubs from the moulding process from under the chassis. We just need to cut them flush so the bottom plate fits nicely. Right, in addition to the chassis we need the cover, A3, the metal plates which are hidden away in an unmarked bag, but you can't really confuse them for something else. We need four plain M3 nuts, four M3x10s, four 6mm ball ends, and four 8mm ball ends. First, we'll be fitting the ball ends to the chassis. This is one of those bits that's a bit different from the original build. Originally, we'd be using flange nuts to attach the ball ends, but the chassis used to crack after a few crashes. Now we have these plates instead that spread the load a bit and tie the two ball ends together. A much nicer solution. All we do with the big ball ends is thread them into the small plates through the chassis and nip them up with a flat bladed screwdriver. Next we have the large plate that goes across the middle. Now when fitting it, pay attention to which way round you've got it. The slot in there is to clear the posts on the bottom of the servo plate. Now despite checking it at least twice, I still managed to fit it backwards. Don't worry though, I did notice when I came to fitting the servo only to see the holes were blocked. The plate's held in with four brass ball ends that screw straight into the plate. Nip them up, and that's the reinforcements done. The bottom plate goes on next with an M3x10 and plain nut in each corner. The nuts have hex-shaped holes inside the chassis to sit in, making it all nice and straightforward. 
just be sure to get it all the right way round. At least if you do get them the wrong way round, it's not too difficult to swap them back. It's not like there's anything glued together. Step 5, front bumper and body mount. We're going to need two M3x15s, four 3x12 self-tappers and two M3 flange nuts. For plastic, there's the two J6s, the front body mounts, A1, which is the cross brace, J3, the bumper, and two K2s, the round lenses. Now the lenses just clip straight into the bumper. I found you can get them most of the way in just with a thumb, then press them down on a flat edge of a bench to get them down the rest of the way, just so they sit flush. Be careful using anything else to push them in though, there's a good chance you might crack the lens. To fit the bumper to the chassis, we need to fit two M3 screws up through the bottom of the mounting lugs, and thread on the nuts just a couple of turns. The bumper has slots rather than holes, so if we flip the chassis over, we can slot the bumper in over the screw threads and tighten up the nuts. Once the nuts are gripping the plastic, you can give them an extra tweak. Just watch out for overdoing it. If you really crank down on them, you might just damage the bumper. The cross brace lays across the top of the chassis, and we use the self-tappers from the bottom, going through the chassis, the cross brace, and into the body mounts. Nip them up, and that's step 5 done. All nice, simple, and straightforward stuff so far. Step 6, the rear brace and body mount. You can probably guess how this one's going to go. We need two 3x8 self-tappers, two J5 body mounts, and A6, the rear brace. An interesting vestigial bit of the cross brace here, it still has the mount for the old mechanical speed controls resistor. The brace goes across the back of the chassis with the antenna mount to the left. Then we pop in one of the body mounts with the pin towards the outside. There's not enough space for two screws, so we just need to use one in the inside hole. It's the same on the other side, and then that's step six complete. Step seven, fitting the servo. For this one we need three 3x12 three self tappers, the servo assembly and the chassis. Now this is where I noticed I got the cover plate backwards. Now considering it's got a little lug to make sure you can't get it wrong, I think I did rather well. In my defence, I am constantly looking around a camera, so sometimes things do get missed. You can clearly see from above that the slot in the metal plate does not line up with the holes. Not a big problem though, I just removed the four screws and nuts, flipped the plate around and reinstalled it. You can now see that the slots line up with the holes, which should help quite a bit. All we do now then is drop the servo in, flip the chassis over, line up the holes with the servo plate and fit the three screws. Once they're all nipped up, that's the servo fitted. You can see once it's all in that you're not going to get to the servo arm screw any more to remove it. So you really need to take the time to make sure the servo is all set up before it goes in. I remember it wasn't uncommon to drill a hole in the side of the chassis so you could get a screwdriver to it. Actually, I seem to remember there was a template you could print out. It's probably long since lost in the bowels of the internet though. Step 8, the fixed end of the battery mount. For this we need two 3x8 self-tappers, four M3x12s and four M3 flange nuts. For plastic, there's A2 the end cap, and C5 the spacer. First then, we need to install the spacer into the cap. It just sits on the end, and we screw in the two self-tappers from the outside. But it's worth noting that you can replace the spacer with a foam pad, so you can run a LiPo that are more often than not slightly longer than the old NICADs. You'll probably have to experiment a little bit with the thickness, but you can usually end up fitting a square or round pack LiPo fairly easily. Now the cap offers up to the side of the chassis and we use the four M3 screws and nuts to attach it. You need to be fairly careful about doing up the screws too tight here. There's not a huge amount of plastic around the screw holes on the cap, so if you crush them, they can crack. All you really need to do is take up the slack and then give them an extra little tweak. And so that's step eight complete. And that's as far as we're going to go this week. Step 9 starts on the axles, which is a whole different subject, with grease and many ball bearings. So, as always then, thanks for watching. Like if you liked, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a message if there's something on your mind. Bye guys!